I think President Biden should have a national. I mean, this is not in his personality, but maybe who knows? He wants a second no, term. He's not going to do what you're about to suggest, but I hear it. Go ahead. He should go on national TV and say um, this. That we have several lower court judges who have acted in ways that are um, illegitimate. One of them keeps striking down the Affordable Care Act. The other and getting reversed. The other one um, just did, has, has struck down a lot of Obama and um, I'm struck down a lot of Biden policies. But this last one is just simply tortured legal reasoning with no basis. I am not going to follow. I'm not going to follow it. What does it mean? Like, I, I'm so I hear everybody saying and asking that question. Should President Biden follow this? I heard Republican Nancy Mace from a pro quote pro-life uh, Republican in South Carolina say, I do not think Joe Biden should follow this. And I'm sitting here going, how does the president get to decide whether or not he's going to follow a court's ruling? This does I, not sound I, like I, a I good tell you, That's why I wanted. We, I wish we did a whole show on this or maybe we will in the future. Um, when the Constitution was being debated, Pete, bear with me. When the Constitution was being debated in 1788, um, and you know Madison and James Madison and John Jay and Alexander Hamilton wanted to convince the people of New York to ratify the Constitution, they wrote a series of essays called the Federalist Papers. All right. One of the reasons they wrote the Federalist Papers is because a guy with a pen named Brutus had written a bunch of op-eds saying, don't ratify this new constitution. It's terrible. And there are a lot of reasons why. One of the biggest reasons he said was the Supreme Court. He said, you can't give judges a job for life and have them strike down laws. There's no, there's no power above them. There's no power below them. They'll be free of all shackles, including those of heaven itself. The word shackles is my word. Heaven itself is his word. Alexander Hamilton responded to that op-ed in Federalist Paper number 78. And what Hamilton said, Pete, was the, famously, was the court has neither purse nor sword. And what Hamilton meant was the court has no military, no police force, no marshals, no anything that they control um, for their own money. And they have no money. Congress, And that's how Congress was allowed to shut down the court for a year. It didn't give any money. Um, Hamilton also said that the judiciary has to rely on the executive to enforce its opinions. And if the judiciary gets too far away from what the executive and the people want, then the executive has the option of not enforcing the orders. Okay. And, okay. And, and that's what I, and he didn't oh, use the But that's, wow. so, so now, 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 sophistic, now, now people will say, all right, Siegel, but wait a minute. I got, in fact, I got this response today. Um, from a law professor about that piece. What about 1958 when the governor of Arkansas said, I'm not going to desegregate my schools because I was not a party to the Brown decision and I don't have to follow the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court unanimously said, yes, you do have to follow us because we are the ultimate law of the land. And President Eisenhower, to his credit, um, sent in the National Guard to enforce the decision. And that's how the system is supposed to work. If the president agrees with it, he should enforce it. In fact, even if he disagrees with it, he should enforce it if he thinks it's legitimate. These judges are not acting legitimately, Pete. They are not. They are doing things that are illegitimate. And the president has no constitutional obligation to enforce illegitimate judicial opinion.